These Pokemon waffles are so good. I'm calling myself? Hello? Hey, Wood. Yeah, I was thinking, since you s- You're not me! Yeah, yeah, it's uh, Bob Wolf from the Wolf Den. So, uh, since you stole part of my video the other week, and uh, since you're in my video this week, I figured we could do a video over on your channel too. We can talk about uh, some of the games we've been playing recently. So, what you're saying is, you're not me? Nope, uh, I'm not you. Is this guy an idiot? Okay, that sounds good. I've been looking for an excuse to talk about Donut County for a while anyway. <coughs> Donuts! That's what I feel like. Didn't you just have waffles? Wood? Hello? Wood? And he's gone again. He's actually really good at doing that. Like Batman, but Batman that sucks. Well, I couldn't find a donut in the house because somebody ate them all! It was me, I ate them all, but I did find this cookie. It's sugar free. It tastes mostly like protein, but it's good. But speaking of donuts, Donut County is my most recent, very short-lived indie addiction. Donut County is a very satisfying and perfectly stupid game. It's stupid in all of the right ways, and it will in so many ways remind you of a little game called Katamari. The first way being the very charming and cartoonish art style, which I absolutely adore, and the second way being the hilarious dialogue and brilliantly written story. Every conversation these characters have with each other is exactly how I talk to my group of friends. This game is definitely my type of humor, and the third and most obvious way this game will remind you of Katamari is in the gameplay. In Donut County, you start with a very small hole in the ground which you can control either using the touchpad or the analog stick, and you start by sucking in small pieces of trash or tiny animals, and every time you eat something with your hole, it grows a little bit larger, obviously allowing you to consume bigger and bigger items into your hole until finally, and you probably guessed it, swallowing up whole buildings or entire freeways worth of cars. This gameplay mechanic on its own is weirdly therapeutic and extremely addicting. As fun as it is, and I would have gladly played the whole game blissfully just swallowing things up in my hole. Doesn't sound right. <laughs> Anyway, as fun as that mechanic is, there are others that you can unlock, like the catapult, which allows you to shoot out some of the items you require, and you can use that to hit switches to open doors to go into other rooms, or to hit a ferris wheel with water to spin it faster and faster until it flies off its frame. They added in so many little neat tricks like this to keep the gameplay fresh in every level. And in between each of the levels, you get treated to a little bit more of the story, piecing together what actually is happening in this town, and why this hole is swallowing everything up. And I say treated to because these little story segments are truly a treat. Again, they're always filled with hilarious dialogue and back and forth between the characters, but these little story parts add context to the next level and they never outstay their welcome. They're always really short and concise, and the whole game is like that in a way. It's a very short and concise little bundle of fun. And my only complaint is I truly wish it was longer. For about $13, I still think this two hour adventure is still well worth the price just to experience the game, but Honestly, I would have rather have paid 40, 50, 60 dollars and got a fully fledged 8 to 10 hour adventure. This is a game I did not want to end, and that's my only complaint. It did. I've never even played an indie game before in my life. Yeah, it's not true. You caught me. It's January, which means I'm still getting through all of the stuff that came out around the holidays and all of the new stuff that came out just this year. And I haven't even gotten a chance to talk about my time with these games. So what better way to tell you my thoughts on all of these titles than to do it on somebody else's channel and not even my own? It's been a really long time since I've spent this much time playing a game and had this much fun with it especially in online multiplayer games. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has had me hooked since day one. Unlocking all of the characters was super fun and really quick. Spirit Mode was fun at first, but takes way too long and lost my interest fairly quickly. The online, though, is where it's at. Playing it with friends and streaming it is super fun. It's probably the most fun I've had streaming ever. And with the new GSP ranking system, I'm now addicted to online battles. 
GSP stands for Global Smash Power. It's basically your ranking for the character you're playing as versus everybody else who's playing online. When you beat someone, your GSP goes up while theirs goes down. When your GSP gets to a certain point, you can unlock Elite Smash. I haven't done this myself because it changes very frequently and the more people who play Smash online, the higher the barrier to entry will be. But that Elite Smash ranking and keeping that Elite Smash ranking is something to strive for. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has gotten a lot of mileage out of me and will presumably continue to get a lot of mileage out of me throughout the year. Gunman Clive released recently on the Nintendo Switch eShop, and if you miss these games back on the 3DS, you have to play them now, especially for the price. $3.99 for both the first and the second game? I honestly think that makes this game the best, cheapest game on the Switch. So if you haven't seen or played Gunman Clive before, the first thing that should be going through your brain right now while you look at this footage is, oh boy, that art style is incredible. It feels like the game is being hand-drawn to life right in front of your eyes as you platform and shoot your way through every level. And speaking of the platforming and the shooting, this game plays very similar to the Mega Man series. You'll have to face platforming challenges like the ground falling away underneath your feet at a moment's notice, or maybe Tetris blocks raining from the sky as you struggle not to get trapped and squished between them. There are so many unique platforming concepts just like this as you play and it constantly keeps you on your toes. And just like Mega Man, the game does not pull any punches. It's very difficult and will take a lot of trial and error to get through some of the more challenging stages. And obviously the bosses won't go down without a fire. You better learn those attack patterns and learn them fast or you're gonna find yourself getting very frustrated. And sure, Gunman Clive is pretty similar to Mega Man, but it does a lot to stand out on its own right. Like maybe in one level, you have to jump on a panda's back and run desperately away from a giant spinning sword blade of death, or sometimes the game will completely change and you'll think you're playing Space Harrier again, a third person on rail shooter, or maybe you'll be on horseback trying to jump over obstacles and shoot the cowboys next to you. Truly worth your four dollars. I, I can't stress this enough. If you have a few bucks lying around, you have to try Gunman Clive. New Super Mario Bros. U is not the best Mario game, but it is still a very good Mario game. I'd much rather have something along the lines of Mario Maker for the Switch to get my 2D Mario fix, but this will have to do. I'm more than happy to play this game years later on the superior hardware. It's also a great game to play with friends if you want to turn them into enemies. I've ended uh, some relationships by accidentally jumping on some people's heads. Should you get this over Mario Odyssey? Hell no. If you haven't played Mario Odyssey yet, what the hell are you doing with yourself? But it's a good way to get your Mario fix in the meantime. And just like Wood said in his video about it, it's kind of just more of the same game that we've gotten before, but I don't necessarily think that that's that bad of a thing. Also, Wood says Mario the same way that I do, so if you make fun of the way that I say Mario and not him, then you're some kind of racist. And it might be a very unpopular opinion, but I always thought that new Super Mario Brothers U was just kind of eh. Salt and Sanctuary. I think it's a fantastic game that absolutely nailed everything it was trying to do. And I'm going to talk about some of my favorite things about the game. However, I hate the game. <laughs> I can't stand it. Hey, let me explain what I mean. If you haven't seen this game before, it is exactly like Dark Souls. And this isn't one of those, oh, it's the Dark Souls of 2D platformers. Oh, it's like Dark Souls. Oh, Dark Souls, Dark Souls, this game, Dark Souls, comparison, Dark Souls. No, somehow they have managed to recreate Dark Souls from a 2D platformer perspective. I mean, even the clunky roll feels exactly the same as when you perform that in the actual Dark Souls series. The only thing that feels vastly different is the combat is much faster. You still have a stamina bar which depletes when you do actions like rolling or attacking, and at the start of the game you can really only pull off a few heavy swings before your stamina is depleted and you have to wait for it to recharge. But those swings are really fast. Between your light and heavy attacks, you'll find yourself flipping and flying all over the levels kind of like Dante and Devil May Cry. And I love that a lot. It's very satisfying combat. And it's really interesting that you end up playing this 2D platformer the exact same way you play the 3D action adventure game. 
You load up the game and you're thrown straight into it with almost no direction other than a few notes on the ground here and there giving you tips. Killing things along the way as you platform until you finally hit your first boss battle and then you of course die to him. And then you start just beelining it straight to the boss, dodging all the enemies and platforming super fast, finding all the ways to get past each of the creatures without taking any damage so you can get straight to that boss battle and try and get your salt or your souls back. And I must have tried like 25 times on this stupid boss. It is just as brutally difficult as any Dark Souls game I have played. This was almost the closest I came to actually breaking my Switch, I swear. However, on my 25th something attempt, I did actually manage to beat the boss and it felt really rewarding. I enjoyed my time playing it so much that I kind of wish there was a difficulty setting. And I know this is probably upsetting so many of you to hear, but if I could actually put this game on easy, I'd probably have a lot of fun playing through the game and actually making progress rather than spending a whole evening trying to beat one character. It's just not what I enjoy doing. Sadly, there is no easy mode, so that's me out. However, if you do like these kind of games, the gameplay is fantastic, the visuals are stunning, and I really do think it's a must play for any Dark Souls fan. Pokemon Let's Go is another game that I've sunken a ton of time into. And just like Pokemon Yellow, it's a deceptively long game, especially if you take your time with it. I don't know if you've played Pokemon Yellow recently, but I have in preparation for this game, and it does not hold up as well as you'd think. There are a lot of broken moves and weird type advantages. There's also some things you never would have figured out on your own without looking it up or hearing about it from a friend. This remake fixes almost all of that stuff. Unfortunately, it adds motion controls for capturing wild Pokemon, but I don't find them too strenuous and honestly, I don't really capture that many wild Pokemon. With the addition of coach and master trainers, there are a lot more trainer battles to be had. I also welcome the fact that you can now see wild Pokemon running about so you can avoid the ones that you already have. The Pokeball Plus is also a really cool accessory that I didn't expect to like this much. We talk about it way more in the video over on my channel, so I'll shut up now. If you saw this really awesome grip on my Switch and thought, hey, what is that and where can I get me one? Well, both Wolfdan and I are giving away a bunch of them, as well as a bunch of cases and other stuff from Satisfy. Not a sponsor, we just really like their products. I want to thank Wolfdan for helping out on this video. We actually really didn't talk much before now, and it's been great getting to know him. He's kind of hilarious. Hey, thanks for having me over here there, Wood. Uh, come on over to my channel where we talk about the best video game hardware of the past year. Okay, bye. With all that being said, if you like this video or you learned a little something, make sure you hit the lip all over that subscribe button, click or tap on that video right there, and let us know where Shirt's going for in this video, you end up vying. Haha, <laughs> see ya!